last reading. The writer wrote that if the National Security Agency <clears throat> wanted to come to his home and look at his telephone records, emails, and texts, he would welcome them because he has nothing to hide. That brought to mind a statement from an earlier time. Quote, I have nothing to hide. I am ready to appear before a public and impartial commission of inquiry with documents, facts, and testimonies in my hands and to disclose the truth to the very end. I declare if this commission decides that I am guilty in the slightest degree of the crimes imputed to me, I pledge in advance to place myself voluntarily in the hands of the executioners." My Unquote. God. My God, who said this? This declaration was made by Leon Trotsky in exile, where he was later murdered on Stalin's orders. Yeah, Stalin bumped off a lot of people from what 30 I million! Yay. Almost as much as the Catholic Church throughout history. 50 million! But how come the media and the history books did not demonize this genocide by Stalin like they demonized uh, Hitler? They never talk about the Catholic Church uh, bumping off 50 million people. Yeah, you don't hear a lot of talk about it. You know, or the genocide of the Native American people and, and how the Europeans brought smallpox over and all this stuff and stealing, stealing. Actually, I think what they really wanted was the gold. They heard there was gold in Dendar Hills and I think they were after the gold with the representative from the Catholic Church talking about Cortez and Pizarro, Spaniard. Spanish conquistadors, when they stole the gold, gold, and the land from Native America, they had a representative of the Catholic Church with them. Interesting. Anyway, they sound disturbingly alike. Then there is the Fourth Amendment to the Bill of Rights, guaranteeing the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures. Sad times these, when some so-called patriots sound like the minions of foreign totalitarianism. Yep. Thank you very much. And here's another letter addressing that same letter of the person who said, I'm nothing to hide. Hey, come on over. Hey, I touch my balls too, you know. You know, t uh, 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 grab my junk at the airport. Yeah, they like to say junk nowadays. <laughs> junk. The I writers. Yeah, I mean, hey, your genitals might be junk, but not mine. Uh, the word junk in that context is much like. Remember back in the 60s, the word was bad, man, you bad, when it meant you were good. Yeah, bad meant good. Yeah. And they used words like groovy. And there's hip-hop words now and today. You're that hip. Uh, dope, man, you're dope. You're a cool cat. you dope, man, you rad. Rad, baby. Use rad. You almost sound like Wolfman Jack. Remember Wolfman Jack? God bless his, rest, God rest his soul. Is he dead? Of course he's dead. Well, how the hell do I know he's dead? You didn't know Wolfman Jack? Hell no. A long time ago. Hello! <laughs> oh, that was Sam the Sham. I was doing Sam the Sham. <laughs> Way there, little red riding hood. You are I looking good. Da, 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 da. Oh, whatever. Quack, 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 quack. 
the writer's statement that he would welcome NSA agents to come to his home because he has nothing to hide is alarming evidence of the ignorance some U.S. citizens have about the Constitution's protection against unreasonable search and seizure. Does he naively think that someone from the NSA would politely knock on the door rather than knock it down and ask for permission to search a home? Who needs privacy? The writer and so many others do not realize that our constitutional freedoms are slowly and in the last decade, not so slowly, being erased in the name of security. We must understand that depending on who is in power in our government, security is easily redefined. We could have another Richard Nixon leading our country, and he had no qualms about compelling an enemies list. And by the way, I believe I was on that list back there in the early 70s. Uh, but you, you were a tad bit too risque for America back then? A tad then? bit against censorship. Ah, uh, hey, censorship, that sounds like fascism to me. Well, it was then. Now it's a little more secretive. You know, you not so blatant. Yeah. But I, Human nature has never changed. It's still vile as, as ever. Don't forget, back then, just as vile. Yeah. There was no Roe versus Wade, and women were having abortions in back alleys and being taken advantage of by unscrupulous doctors, etc. Psychic. 60s and the early 70s. Psychic healers. You know? Psych you know, the psychic healers, they used to go like this over your body with their hands and they had like a, they had like a raw ch a chicken liver or a gizzard. I saw it on TV. They yeah, had, yeah. they were it hiding it. And look at, I pulled out, I got the tumor. And it was a, <laughs> I swear, and it was like a chicken liver. Yeah. Yeah, I saw it on, on, on video. It was, uh, yeah, the, the, psych, the psychic faith healers, were. Yeah, you, there was one in the uh, Philippines, I believe. Yeah, that was the one. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> the chicken liver. Yeah, the raw chicken liver. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Oh, and he was taking money. I mean, he was taking a fee for curing people. We could have another demagogue uh, like uh. U.S. Senator Joe McCarthy and an Un-American Activities Committee that cruelly and unnecessarily ruined so many lives in the name of security. Let me guess, Senator McCarthy was a Republican? No kidding. <laughs> uh, Senator Joe McCarthy, I believe, is reincarn reincarnated today by Mr. Daryl Issa. But I you know, believe he's a congressman. There was, uh, I was watching um, an episode of uh, uh, Seth MacFarlane's Family Guy cartoon, and uh, Stan Smith, who's a CA, who is a very ultra right wing jerk, asshole, idiot, CIA agent, wanted to. Uh, he had access to somehow to a time machine. He wanted to go back in time and assassinate Jane Fonda during the oh, Vietnam. Geez. Yeah, because he was a he was a nut. He was a nut. Isn't it funny she how? Apologize. Isn't it funny how the nuts that want to shoot people, like they're never nuts that want to bump off a a greedy demonic corporate CEO. They always want to bump off some um, somebody doing good, like let's say a Democratic congresswoman, like like that poor woman that got shot in Arizona at that time. JFK? Yeah, somebody that's that wants to do good for the mainstream population, yeah. A nice person. Yeah. Yeah. They don't they don't go after a piece of shit CEO. But again, Jane Fonda apologized. 
Swaggart apologizes, Sanford apologizes, all these other Jimmy Swaggart? Yeah. Oh, how you idiots. see him. They apologize. And, oh, they're accepted back into the Christian into the uh, fold, yeah. fold right away, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. But if you really know the Bible and you speak the truth and you really want to do good, you are demonized by the uh, by Satan's world here, uh, uh, Satan, the devil's economics of capitalism. You are demonized if you are a real nice person that really wants to do good. Speaking out or organizing a protest against what our government is doing could well be labeled as a threat to our nation's security. Yeah, sure. And that obliterates our right to peaceably dissent. Without that right, we have a dictatorship. The slippery slope begins with the small skin. Don't be lulled into a false belief that it can't happen here. I just want to tell everyone, before I show something positive, it's, this is not part of the Chisler's Hall of Shame, but I just want to tell people that you are watching Corporate and FCC Free Internet talk show that we are very progressive, but it is uncensored and FCC Free. That's why you hear... Uh, everything as it is. Uh, you hear occasional cursing, uh. yelling, curse words. They are not planned. This is not like uh, pre-rehearsed shock jock media. This is all ad-libbed, spur of the moment, or sperm of the moment. Spur of the moment. Everything comes, if something happens, it is react to and responded to exactly unexpectedly at that moment like real life would be like a real life reality show not a reality show that's like doctored up and faked you know to get ratings to get ratings you know what show I actually saw the other day and watched hardcore porn? 22 minutes or whatever it was what? duck nation I never seen that duck nation as in all quack, the quack. mountain men that make the duck uh, Oh, the hunters? The, the hunt? Are they in Alaska? No, they're down south. But they're hunters. No, they make duck calls and stuff. That's what they made a show out of? Yeah, there's like ducks. Six of them. Duck hunters? There's one guy who employs them all. Just duck hunting. But they're they're lazy. They don't want to work. They they do whatever and uh, anything else but doing My the work. My God, what else would they make a reality show out of? <laughs> But I'm going to tell you something. Duck hunters. Every one of them who's married has a good looking chick. Really? Are they, they all, you know, they got the full beards. Oh, like ZZ Top? Yeah. No, ZZ's a little long. Like, hit, like hillbillies, little right? Long. Yeah, yeah, they're mountain men. But they have good looking chicks. Mountain men. Mountain men. They, have, they have attractive girlfriends and wives. Uh, very you know what? You know what show I like? Because I like the father. I like swamp people, the Louisiana Cajun people that go hunting alligator in, in the bayou swamp. And and the father is so funny. He's got that ah guarantee, that, that Cajun way of talking. But he's funny. He he, he he's always busting his son's chops and you know I, I like him, you know. You know, I don't like Larry the cable guy because he's a teabagger and he's always saying, Ah, America, everything America is number one. Everything uh, America is the best. No, it's not. Not infant mortality on up. Well, he's a he's a flag. You see, weight. America is he's down a... at the bottom of the list. Yeah, for yeah. many things, but, but but he is real teabagging, kissy ass, Larry Cable guy, and and he just goes on and on and on. Now, before I forget, this gentleman here is a self-portrait of. The Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, it is a watercolor painting done by my co-host and mentor, the Reverend <clears throat> Dr. William J. Eisenman. 
and you can see the William J. Eisenman collection by simply going to lowercase all one word William J. Eisenman collection dot tumblr dot com and if you like something uh, Buy it. let us know let us know post post it at tumblr uh, or go to newslettercensor.com and send uh, Dr. Bill a message and, it, and if it's still available you can buy one. It, it, it is signed by William J. Eisenman himself every one of his watercolor paintings um, and that's pretty much it. I mean if you want to uh, the most important thing is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work and uh, just go to newslettercensored.com. But anyway, that's it. Okay, now, what I wanted to show Dr. Bill and our viewers is one of my early, one of my early birthday presents. One of. This is a, an external hard drive that can fit in your pocket. It is 500 gigabytes, 500 gigs. It's thin, as you can see okay it's not very big and it's very light and I thought it was a tear this little thing no this is 500 gigs oh. it's a half a tear and it, the, another plus is it, it does not need a power source it does not have to be plugged in it only needs to be plugged into the USB mm -hmm. it doesn't have to go into the electrical outlet so it's very convenient and very portable 500 gigabytes in this little thing. I mean, technology is amazing. I mean, uh, considering when the thumb drives and the flash drives first came out, they were what, like two gigs? Yeah, and they were not really expensive, but they yeah. were, you know, enough. Now, I think I saw an 18 gig at uh, Micro Center. Yeah. For a small price. Yeah. So this is uh this actually this technology might very well make Easy Dock obsolete when you think about it. Easy Dock is, is large and you, and you you put the old fashioned big metal clunker uh, hard drives in there. But this is like very portable, very light, fits in a jacket pocket doesn't need a power source and the company is uh, let's see uh, Western Digital Western Digital WD my passport edge portable hard drive that's what WD is Western Digital yeah oh. okay I'll take your word for it anyway there it is pretty cool huh pretty cool yeah and portable like a cigarette case yeah yeah, like an old, like the old uh, cigarette cases that the uh, the rich movie stars used to keep their their poison in. Remember these cigarette holders? Stay thirsty, my friend. Stay thirsty, my friends. All right. He has one. One more. Oh, okay. One more for the road. That's it. Let me get the horns. Go ahead. Just when you thought it was safe to attend your next barbecue. Uh oh. There's a new scourge in town. Additional one? It's the Asian Tiger Mosquito. Ti tiger or Tigan? Tiger. How the hell did that get over here? An elegant little bug oh. that will eat you alive. Oh, that the pretty glistening, the, the little jewel-like mosquito? New Jerseyans had learned to live with if not exactly love several species of plain brown mosquitoes. But these take the cake. That had collectively earned the title of New Jersey State Bird in late night talk show monologues. <laughs> oh gosh. But! But there's a new kid in town. The Asian tiger mosquito, named for its distinctive black and white striped legs, and body markings. Oh yes, is now a major nuisance in Bergen and Passaic County. I've seen them. You could see it. You could actually see it. How did they get here? May I ask? 
on a container ship from me, China. I was just going to say, from China, on a container ship, loaded with product made by cheap labor for American companies coming back to the U.S. untariffed like they should be. And this is where the stowaway Tiger Mosquito came aboard. Now, um, I have a video on, um, well, they're on YouTube, but I have it on my group Holistic Health Talk on Facebook. Uh, I showed you before, you take like a, a two liter soda bottle, plastic bottle, you cut the top part off so you have a funnel. You invert it, okay? You put a mixture of um, water, heavy sugar, and uh, uh, a little bit of live baker's yeast. And what happens is the baker's yeast feed on the sugar, and as they feed on the sugar, it gives off carbon dioxide, which is what attracts mosquitoes because as we exhale, that's how mosquitoes find us, uh, through the carbon dioxide. Right. So what happens is, for some reason, primitive creatures of all different types have a tendency to be able to go through a funnel one way, but they haven't figured out how to turn around and exit that hole. It's not only primitive beings, as Wilhelm Reich showed, Really? The entrance to the trap, which he, uh, he used the word trap for emotional disorders. Yeah. Which end up in your muscles and fixations and all this other stuff. Yeah. But the entrance to the trap is also the exit. But humans can't find that really? by themselves, obviously. If you look at any trap, folks, uh, bait traps, crawdad traps, uh, lobster, lobster traps, traps, crab traps, they're all, it's all based on a funnel. In this case, it's like chicken wire material, but it's all based on a funnel where the animals can enter, but they cannot figure out how to exit. Meanwhile, the hole is the same diameter going in as it is coming out. But because of the shape of the funnel, they can't exit it. And that, that's, what ha that's, a, a, that's how you make the mosquito trap, and that's how you make the fly trap, except, except with the fly trap, which is good for your barbecues in the daytime, Instead of putting sugar water with baker's yeast, you put a piece of raw meat in there, which oh, am I upsetting you? Which attracts the flies. Why not cook the meat and I can eat it? No, a little bait for the flies. Okay. Little for piece, little piece. Track. They go in, they can't Feed escape. Day. That's Feed it. me! Feed me! I'm hungry! Help me! As a from the fly, we're Vincent Price. Anyway. Thank you for joining us for this week's progressive discussions. I will, uh, um, I will create. I will try to abide by it, but I will create a new amendment for Mega Life Twenty One shows, and that is, I have to learn that when shit unexpectedly happens, I have to try to work it into the show as simply as shit happens and not get upset or meditate about it. Like when, when Steve, the black and white cat, may, you know, behave like it wanted to leave the, the office and he decided to go back and forth, yes, I want to go out, no, I don't want to go out, and then, the, and then we, we went on the air and then all of a sudden the oh motherfucker God. wanted to go out while we were rolling, I have to bite my tongue and just suck it up and not allow it to piss me off so much because I really want to maintain a certain look for the show. But I realize one thing, no matter how nice I feel the show looks, 
there's always some motherfucker out there that will choose to be petty Yay! and criticize us. Wow, when did you come to that decision? And not even pay attention to the content, 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 Bruno. content, content, content. Hey, 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 hey. Remember the Three Stooges? They would repeat a word and they start dancing. You remember that? Yeah, they don't say anything about the content. But they'll say, oh, you guys are not in a state-of-the-art uh, studio. Ooh. Not realizing that sponsors, which are needed to be able to pay for this, will censor us. Isn't that so? Yeah. Yeah. But like I say, why even worry about that? You mean, why worry about what people say? Because you got content, so why worry about it? Yeah. Well, uh... uh if the person isn't uh, criticizing content, what does that tell you? He ain't listening! He's not listening. Uh, or he's not reading the newsletter. Correct! Like your relative there? Huh? I have a relative. You have a relative that is a teabagger who does not, who gets the newsletter for many decades? who is teabagging, and obviously if they were reading the content of the newsletter, they wouldn't be a teabagger. Correct. Because they would, they would see, they would read the real truth. Correct. So, uh, yeah, that's the story. Uh, we have one more day of the heat wave. 90. No way, Jose. What do you mean, Monday? All week. Wait, whoa, 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 you mean? <coughs> All week long. You mean the 90 degree plus with heat and humidity is going to extend this weekend? You got it. So what happened to this, uh, back to the uh, the low 80s that the weatherman... I believe the low 80s tomorrow is 89. <laughs> That's the high 80s. <laughs> you know... I've well, said what it, is it today? I think I, it's 95. I've said it before and I'll say it again. And uh, when I said it, the person who desperately wanted everybody to like him got nervous <gasps> that I dared to remotely criticize the career of a meteorologist, a weather person. It really, I couldn't, I, 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 this person made me so upset I wanted to bitch slap him. Ah. I can't stand people that are so such sycophants, they have no backbone, that they are, they desperately want, they don't want to offend anybody, they want every person to like them and love them, like an obsession, and they're afraid of what their mommy, this, this guy was a mama's boy, extraordinaire, they're desperately afraid of what their mommy would say and think, and whether or not she would approve of this gentleman, this, this, this young man. When I mentioned the fact that the weather person is the perfect job because they could be wrong every day and still get paid a lot of money, he had no comment. When I mentioned about the Catholic Church and all the corruption of, in their history and uh, genocide, he, not only he had no comment, he was twitching and shaking, rocking back and well, forth. Was he a Roman Catholic? 